me. So th there are things I don't know about Google. So in my district, Google Hangouts is blocked. So I'm kind of going to try to toggle between my two different accounts, which is going to be a challenge because like some of the Pear Deck features I want to show you only exist in my educator account, not in my free account. So we're, we're going to kind of play back and forth with that here. So hopefully I don't uh, go down in flames too hard as we work through this here for this, but it, it'll be what it is. Uh, I, I'm glad you guys are here. Uh, it's always awkward for me. I like meeting people face to face, talking to myself right now, which is kind of what I feel like I'm doing, isn't something that I'm very good at. So um, tell me if I go too fast or too slow, shout at me if you need to, you can always unmute and say, hey, stop uh, for those. And, and I'll try to pause often. And I'm gonna try to get you guys in a little bit involved with this, not just passively listening to me talk the whole time. I could talk the whole time, I can talk. I, I just probably not the best thing for all of us on a Wednesday morning. So I'm gonna start off by uh, hopefully sharing my screen here. And again, Hangouts, we don't have Hangouts in my district here. So if I mess some of this up, bear with me because we use Zoom, my district's block Hangouts. I haven't used Hangouts a ton other than as a passive observer for quite some time. So I'm gonna click present now and hopefully you'll see my screen. If you don't, then uh, give me a shout out. All right, looks good, yeah. Steve. Good. All right. So this is just a Google slide deck. And, and I wanted to kind of show you a little bit of the basics of Pear Deck here. Let me close this out here. I was kind of trying to jump back and forth to see if I could make this work a little bit earlier for those. This is just a Google slide deck. You can also do this in PowerPoint. I have not had a lot of practice doing it in PowerPoint, but if you're not a Google person or you still like PowerPoints quite a bit, Pear Deck does work with those too. So the key to getting started with Pear Deck is understanding that you need the add-on. The add-on is what you need to make any slide deck work with Pear Deck. And just to give you a brief overview, Pear Deck is basically allowing you to make your presentations a little bit more active. You can add in interactive questions and a ton of different features, including something I'm pretty excited about. You can kind of see down over here that I'll get to in a little bit. Just uh, two days ago, they added in the ability to record or insert audio clips into your Pear Deck. I see teachers all the time asking about, you know, how do I record my voice in a slide deck and a presentation? And there are some ways to do that. I, I think this is probably the easiest way I've seen. So we'll get into that here in just a little bit for those. All right, so under add-ons, if you've never gotten Pear Deck, you'll click on get add-ons. You don't need to have Pear Deck and the kids don't need to have the Pear Deck add-on to be able to use this uh, right now. Or when you present to the kids, they don't need this. It's the the add-on is for creating those Pear Decks, not for students to be able to view them. So that's an important thing, the question that I get asked quite a bit. So I'm gonna open up that add-on and it's gonna pop up over here on the side. I'm gonna just kind of really quickly show you how simple it is to do this and kind of what's over here. And then I'll give you guys a chance. I'm gonna to try to turn on student pace. We'll see if that works and let you guys go into the Pear Deck and I can show you both the student and the teacher perspective as we work through this. All right, so I'm on a creative slide that I've already created here. Idea Illinois, April 29, Google Office Hours. Kind of just threw this together at the last minute here. And I'd like you guys to be able to draw on this slide. So I'm just gonna click on this draw feature, which is a premium feature. So if you're in a personal account, you might not see that. There'll be a little star next to it, actually, I think is what it usually comes up in the personal account. And it was that simple. So what I did is I had the slide created. I clicked over here on draw. I wanted to make sure that worked before I went through it. As soon as I clicked on it, it thought for a minute and then it added this here. And I'll show you what this looks like from the student end and from my end when I'm presenting after I just go through a couple other ones here real quick. So hopefully that's a good start. If not, I'll pause after the Pear Deck piece and I'll answer any questions you guys have. All right, so next slide here, I also already created this one. How would you explain some of the difference between active and passive learning? Now, in this case here, I'd probably want a text-based slide. So I click on that text, thinks about it for a minute, less than a minute actually, and then it adds that response in here. So right now, you're probably not getting a great idea what this is if you haven't used Pear Deck. I promise in a minute, I'll get you there. Here's a template that I pulled from Pear Deck that I've already made, and this is a multiple choice one, true or false. The idea team is awesome. I'm gonna vote for true and you'll get to see how that works here. But if I don't, if I just want a generic slide, uh, something that I can just create a question for, if you have this open over here, they have this at the top here called the template library. If I click on that template library, it opens up the templates of these incredible slides that they already have. So SEL is an important thing right now. So I'm just gonna pick one of these for right now. For those, here's a good one. I like this one. This is a drawing slide, which is another real cool slide type here. Stress check, here we go. Let's put in a stress check about remote learning. So I click on that, and what it's going to do is actually pull a new slide template into that spot. Fingers crossed here that this actually goes like it's supposed to here. Usually it doesn't take quite this long. So we'll see if I can't put in a template here, we'll make the most of it. Oh, there it is, good. 
So this is an actual drag and drop one, which is one of my favorite ones to use with students for just kind of quick checks and things like that. In the classroom, you can also kind of use this uh, for this. So here, so I'm not going to alter this one, but you could change the text, the categories, you can even change the images. This is a completely editable slide. It's now going to look like it's Pear Deck. All right, last one I want to show you here real quick, and then we'll get into this, is add audio. And now, just in case this didn't work here, I do have one already ready to go here. But I'm going to try to do one more real quick to show you what the audio piece looks like. I'm going to try to get this to leave me alone there for a minute. All right, so I'm going to go back to the main Pear Deck piece here. And then this one's new, and you probably might not see this if you're in a personal account. I've, I've talked to a couple people that aren't seeing it. Right now, this is supposed to be free for all accounts. For some reason, for some people, it hasn't rolled out. I don't know if that's a Google admin thing or something beyond that. I don't have the ability to see that uh, with my piece here. But I'm just going to click Add Audio to this slide. Now, that was a slide that I already had created. And it's really, really, really simple. You can upload, which means you can upload any file that you have, an audio clip or something like that, or you can record. So I'm just going to record myself. And I don't know if this is going to work because we're doing the the Hangout Meet at the same time, so I'm not sure if my microphone's going to rebel against me. That's why I already put the other one in there, but let's just try real quick to see if this works. I couldn't test this out for those, so if you don't hear me for a minute, uh, oh, well, we'll find out. Lindsay will take over, and um, I'll jump back in if for some reason this hijacks my uh, Hangouts one, but I'm going to allow it to use my microphone. So it should be recording me right now as I'm talking about this add audio feature. As soon as I click pause, that's done, I can pause and resume, or I can click save. I'm just gonna click save, I'm not, not trying to do anything fancy here. I can listen to that clip. I'm not gonna try to play audio on you twice here right now for that, but we'll see if it works when you get into that. And then once, if I'm happy with it, I click add audio to slide. And fingers crossed that that actually goes. All right, I think we're there. So I, I'm not sure whether you can delete this or not. I haven't had time to experiment with that, but that threw some people off when we were playing with it here. You actually don't see, it's a little bit different than what I'm used to seeing in a lot of the Pear Deck ones where you see this little drop down piece right here. This is actually just a link to explain what the audio is for those. And, and I haven't wanted to delete it yet. I haven't had enough time to play with this with my students to see what me deleting that does or doesn't do for those. But hopefully when we present this, okay, you'll see that. So again, this is just a regular Google Slides presentation. Now to present with Pear Deck, and it's great for remote learning. I use it um, at least once a week with my students uh, to kind of engage them in some different activities. And I'm always happy to share those if anybody wants those in more detail. And I'll give you some resources at the end that kind of connect to some of the things we've done too. So in the Pear Deck, then I just have to click Start Lesson. When I click Start Lesson, it's going to give me two choices. Instructor Paste, that's where you're controlling the pace of the slide deck. You can use this for remote learning in a Zoom or something like that. I'm not going to I'm going to start with that today and see if that works, but I'm going to switch it over to student paste pretty quick. Student paste is what I use most of the time so that I can just share a link with the students to it through Google Classroom, which is what I use, but you can share it through email or just about anywhere you can share a link. You can share the student paste activity, which means students can do that. And you'll see both here in just a minute. So I'm going to try the instructor paste and see what this looks like in Google Hangouts. It'll ask me to sign in. Now, this is where we could get in trouble because I'm going to try to do it with my school account, but I'm in my personal account, so we'll see what happens here. So I may not like this. It really doesn't make me do that twice. Let's see. Oh, all right. So what I'd like you to do, and I'll know if some of this is working for you guys, and what I see right here is go to joinpd.com, maybe open up a separate tab uh, so you don't lose this one here. And then the code, and I'll read it to you a couple of times if you don't want to toggle back and forth, is O-M-K-T-M. -M. And Pear Deck always, if you've never used it, gives you this cute little way to remember it. Orange muffins keep troubling muffins. I don't know what that exactly means, but uh, it's there. So O-M-K-T-M. All right, I got two students, so that means this is working, at least as far as I can tell. Again, talking to myself here uh, along those lines. We'll wait for a couple more people to get in here, and then I will give you guys a chance to actually see this on your end, and we'll kind of try to toggle back and forth between what you guys can view and what I can view for those. So I'm going to give you guys about another 15 seconds while I ramble aimlessly here. O-M-K-T-M to join this interactive Pear Deck that I really just threw together in about five minutes this morning and I added a couple of slides pretty quick. All right, so you can just follow along here if you don't want to join the class. The code will also pop up here in the top corner. So I'm going to click Start Class. Now I normally run these off a second device so that I can see things on the side like I'll have my iPad and you can have a dashboard open so I can control that from here. Obviously I can't easily run this from a second device at doing this here for those. So as of right now, I have complete control over this. You should have gotten a little message at the beginning of how you're feeling today. 
for those. And I'm going to pull up and show student responses here first before I turn this on to student paste, just so you can see what the teacher side of it looks like. So I'll see for everybody that's logged in. Oh, yep, somebody's got the rainy day. I can see what people are drawing as they go through this. Now, on my dashboard, if I had that open, I would actually see who each of you are. So be careful. I do know if you signed in through Google who's here. But when I display it like this, you don't see the kid's name. So it's anonymous if I wanted to display some of these for the class. I like the flower. Yeah, flowers are starting to come up. I love it for those. I'm going to hide responses here now again so you can kind of see my view here. I'm going to open up really quickly the teacher dashboard so you can kind of see the dashboard. And I could open it up in a new device too, but I'm just going to do it right here so you can kind of see what this looks like from the teacher. And I know this isn't perfect for the way that I'm showing this to you, but, but hopefully at least you'll get an idea. Again, this is being a little slow. I don't know if my kids are, they're not supposed to be on the Wi-Fi today. There we go. So for my teacher view, this isn't something I wouldn't show the students, but this is what I'd be looking at at the other device. I can see all of the items here. I can see the names. There's Lindsay's right there. So Lindsay did the really happy high space. She added some color. I really like it. And I wouldn't normally display this to the students, but you get an idea of what's here for that. So I'm going to go ahead and switch this over to student paste. So now in student paste mode, you guys have the ability, and I'm going to keep my main screen open, to move through the slide deck at your own pace. So if you look over here, 13 of you are still drawing on the first slide, and I can see three of you are, have already moved on to the second slide. So let's just take about a minute or so for you guys to kind of click through this, and then I'll end the session and show you guys kind of how that piece works right at the end. And I don't know how the takeaway piece is going to work since I'm kind of jogging between my two accounts, but we'll take a look at that. So go ahead. I want to see you guys moving through here. Good. I see some of you have moved to the second side. Feel free to look at any of the slides, skip around. Maybe somebody tries to go down to the audio if you're curious about that. And just go ahead and check through this for a second. I'll be quiet. I'll try. I'll stare at my screen blankly, and I'll kind of look at what you guys are doing as we work through this. And I can see on any given slide, I know you guys can't see this here, but I'm kind of bouncing back and forth. I can see your text responses. I can get a nice chart of true or false. So, so far, most of you are saying true. Remember, I can see who you are. If you say false, um, I'm going to let Lindsay uh, track you down. That'll be her job, but for those. The stress check, this is a kind of a drag and drop one, so I can kind of see where people have gone along those lines, and I can, by scrolling over it, see who's who. Then the audio one, which, again, I'm still kind of learning here, right, too. I don't get a good view of this from my teacher side, so hopefully you're seeing down here in the bottom write a little set of headphones. And if you click on those, it should open a play one where you could hear what I recorded earlier. Hopefully that recorded. Again, I didn't have a chance to check that. Or you can do the one on this last slide where I just threw a song in there that I had on my drive. Uh, copyright infringement probably happening there. So I am not publishing this anywhere else. All right. I'm going to give you a second or two more to kind of look through this here. And then I'm going to pause. And maybe Lindsay can check to let me know if there's any questions. Mm -hmm. So I don't try to do too many things at once about Pear Deck. Sure. And then I'm going to wrap up Pear Deck and kind of move into another active thing that I do a lot with Google Drawings. Hey, Steve, right. is Pear Deck free right now for educators? Pear Deck is always free to a certain extent for educators. And some of the features have been added in as free right now for educators. Uh, I used it for two years, totally free, without any of the extra features. There are a few things that are missing. I'm not going to spend a ton of time going through that. I can give you a link if anybody needs it to see the difference between the free and the paid. I probably wouldn't pay for it as much as I love it because it's expensive. Although, from what I understand, and that's above me, uh, you get a pretty good price uh, from the school district for a school district one. Okay, and then... Um... Another question was, how do I keep them to stay with the instructor? So you just showed and modeled the self-paced version, but there is another option. Yeah, so you guys noticed when I first went in there, you couldn't go to the next slide. You didn't have the ability to do that. So if I was presenting this in class, which is when I would use the non-student paste one, or through a Zoom or Google Hangout or something like that, they log in with the code, and I don't turn on student paste, and then they have to be on the screen that I'm on. So I've seen some teachers do some really good things with this. I don't do a lot of synchronous learning because it's hard for me to get all of my high school kids there at the same time. And then I then I don't feel that I'm being fair if, if mm -hmm. I'm getting something with one or another. So I try to do a lot more asynchronous. Not that synchronous doesn't have its place. Just for me and my two classes of high school kids, 
it's really, really hard for me. I do office hours a couple times a week, and I'm lucky to get 10 out of my, I only teach two classes right now, 10 out of my uh, 50 kids in there at any given time that kind of come in and out because they're busy with their other classes too. So for those, but yes, in, if you were to present here in those modes there, if I turn off student paste here, uh, where is my presentation session? So if I turn off student paste, if you're looking at that screen, I, I know I'm not presenting my screen anymore, but I just turned off student paste. Now you can see you're going to be stuck at whatever slide I'm on. So I'm going to go to the last slide and you'll kind of see where that is. Any other quick questions? Um, Faye asked, can students insert audio during a session? No. So the audio piece is brand new and that would be really cool. Um, I talked to Pear Deck and asked them about that and they weren't sure if that was something they had a way to do. There's no way to attach files yet with Pear Deck or do audio. You've basically got the multiple choice, the drawing, um, the short answer, the drag and drop. The drag and drop one's really cool for a bunch of different things. You can add, put different icons in there and stuff too. I didn't show you anywhere near all the features that are there. But as of right now, the audio piece is only from the instructor side. So if like you wanted to have in the first slide a greeting to your students, you know, click on this audio before you do this, hey, and give them some verbal instructions. Or if you wanted to have verbal instructions on every slide, some kids need twice. Mm -hmm. I think that's a great way to use this. Again, this just came out the day before yesterday. And I haven't actually even used it with my class yet. We're working on something else that's outside of Pear Deck. I didn't want to just guinea pig them up there. Most of my high school seniors who are still doing this are stressed enough about the fact that they're not in school. So I haven't wanted to yeah, too that. much. I haven't experimented with them as much as I might normally do if this was in class. Mm -hmm. probably would have done this the first day it came out in class together just to see how it worked. And I'd have all their computers playing the audio one time just to see what it sounded like and what it did. Right. I know opposite end of the spectrum, I have a kindergarten student and a lot of the work I have to sit next to him and do with him. But if there were the audio, you know, um, inserts on every slide that read the directions to him, that might be a little bit more of a support that that parents could appreciate, too. Definitely. Um, another question from Cindy. Can you show how the drag and drop works? Sure. So the, dra the drag and drop and uh, we'll put one in here. Real quick here. Oh, I got to go back to present my screen. Sorry. Let me get back to that. So the drag and drop. So I'm going to go and I'm just going to put in a blank slide here real quick. This won't be anything real fancy, so bear with me. And I'm going to put in the draggable. And the draggable works basically by allowing you to put in a bunch of different things here. So I'm going to add another couple of boxes here. I, I'm not actually going to put this back into presentation mode for you guys, but you at least get an idea here. So I can label all these. I don't have to leave the label stuff. I can also change what they are to give you some different features for those, for all those. And I can add those in here. And they'll be off to the side for the students. I can make them bigger or smaller, too, depending on what I'm trying to do. I see a lot of teachers do this really well with, with maps and different things like that. And then I click Update the Slide. Now, again, this is going to be really a little bit, probably not as practical, but I'm not going to go jump back in the presentation. But they have some nice videos on how all this works, too, and I'll share all those resources with you in a little bit. So now you'll see this is a draggable site. So when the students would get to this one, they would basically, I'd have to write some instructions here, like, you know, mark the different locations. I do this quite a bit with my kids. I have a couple presentations buried on my, I pull one of those up right now, but those are in my school account. I'm in, in my personal drive right now. So mark the location or something like that. And then when the students would see this, there might be a map back there or a drawing or something like that. They can pull the different icons and I would give them a key on here what the different icons represented. I usually try to do no more than four icons on a page. Like a lot of times I'll do like a four split screen labeled like I just did one, uh, we were doing water and I just labeled these different features of us controlling water. We had levees on there and dams and things like that. And they had to code each one of those for that. It's kind of a cool way to look at that. So hopefully that was a week but rather at least enough of an explanation to let you know how that's going okay i got my go for it amy here's my question um i have a teacher who's retiring and she's been a phenomenal national board teacher who's created quite a few district level resources for us that we're now using across all grade levels we do have a shared google drive account um that we use for all of our district level curriculum but i'm talking like 
dozens and dozens and dozens of resources. Any tips or tricks instead of having, and she's not part of that shared drive, because it's a curriculum department level shared drive. Two thoughts. I put her on the Google shared drive for the curriculum department and let her move things in, or she transfers over ownership to someone who is on those, or who's in that shared drive. Anybody got tips on that? Uh, th that's a good question. Uh, there are a couple of things that, that you can do with that. I think you're talking about Team Drive, right? Or is it a shared folder? Um, well, now Team Drive's called Shared Drive. It was oh, originally. Right. Yeah. You're right. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. What throws me off because I, hate, I don't like that. Name. I know. <laughs> I know. Me. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. So for yeah. and now they're getting people twisted because they're like, wait, isn't that Shared Drive and that Shared Folder? What what is it? So yes, originally uh, well, Team Drive. Yes. What we, what we usually recommend because we want teachers to be able to keep their ownership of what they have, and that can be kind of in a massive way for those is a lot of times what we'll do is we'll create just like whoever's going to take ownership initially of it, we'll um, create a folder that they both have edit access to and we'll have them basically allow that person to make copies of everything so that we're not stealing their original work and those kinds of things. And then we'll move those all into that shared folder or into shared drive. I personally don't use shared drive a ton because I find it, the part that annoys me the most is that you have to share everything individually. You can't share a whole folder and those types of pieces. I do like the fact that it makes the stuff a little bit more secure and it's harder to, to delete things. But it drives me crazy because what Google is for is that ability to collaborate and share. And I don't think in the share drive, and I keep wanting to call it team drive, that's my bad. Uh, that's the best way to do it. So that's what we'll do typically when a teacher is going to go is we'll recommend make a copy. And sometimes we'll help facilitate that if they're not sure. We'll make a folder that somebody else owns. And we'll have that person then get access to being able to view the original folder. And then we just make copies of everything. And when you make a copy, the new owner gets ownership of that, and as opposed to going in and clicking on each one and doing that. There are some other ways kind of to work around that, but that's the one that works quickest and easiest for us when we're dealing with different levels of Google skills. That help a little bit? Yeah, so, and unfortunately, because we have her links linked into so many other layers, making the copies is where we're not going to kind of be able to go down that route because it's layered link to link to link to link, and it's like, oh. So, and I think what might be coming of this is we just take her drive and transfer it to a generic account that's internally in the district that nobody has access to and then at least that way if we stumble on something once it gets turned off we can go into her into that generic account open it up open that access link up transfer it, and then get back over yeah i, I so. think that you're yeah on the admin side it's probably going to be a way to do it then if, if yeah if you have those layers of links everywhere which if yeah. i ever retire i'm wondering what's going to happen with all my junk Exactly. And that's the hard thing. It's, you know, we that collaboration piece is key, but we're really trying to be good about cleaning up people's Google accounts once they leave the district. And right now we're starting to prep for some of our really strong teachers who are leaving and retiring. We've got a big retirement year and it's like, oh, so thanks for the thought through on that. Yeah, good luck. That, Amy, that, that there was, Amy, there were two other suggestions in the chat if you want to uh, check that as well. But yeah, definitely sounds like a a big task that you have ahead of you. So good luck. All right, if, if we're good with Pear Deck for now, I'm happy to answer some more questions at the end. I'm gonna jump into real quickly here. We've got some time. I do wanna give you guys some time at the end to explore. I'm not a big presenter to present for an hour straight and then have you guys uh, not have any time to ask questions or explore. I'm gonna do real quick, just a couple examples of how I use Google Drawings, which I think is a really underused tool to kind of get students actively learning for those and it's pretty easy to set up. It's not super pretty all the time unless you're really, really good at Google Drawings. So I kept some simple ones out here for you. And then I'm gonna briefly kind of sh show you through one of the presentations I started doing again this year that I'd given up on in a couple of years, Google Secrets, and just show you a couple of kind of create creating resources from there and then give you some time to explore, answer any other questions for those. Cause again, I don't wanna talk here again for another 35 minutes and have you guys all nod off. Those of you, I can't see your screens. I can't tell if you're awake or not for those. So I'm gonna jump in and share my screen again and i'm going to show you a couple of quick google drawing tools and i we have all the links for all of this that lindsay or i'll put in to the end and i'll keep updating that document a little bit as we go forward here and i'll answer questions about it too right at the end too so i'm going to take over again here and see if i can get my entire screen going and then i'm going to hopefully you guys can see that somebody give me a shout out if you can 
as I'm presenting to everyone. So I think I should. Yeah, it looks right. good. So I, I am not the original idea guy behind this, but one of the things that I've always done with my students is a variety of different ways of getting them to kind of create memes as reflections. So some of my students are really good at it, some aren't, but when I used to just give them some basic instructions and some blank templates, what most of my high school kids did was a Google search and then they plagiarized and put a meme that they didn't make. So last year I started making this our primary way of quickly doing a meme. And I'll just show you how this works real quickly for those. But this is a template that you all have access to that you can make a copy of. And that's what I have my two students do. I actually sometimes make a copy for them in Google Classroom for when I want them to do this, or I explain to them how they can make their own copy when we do this. So this is just a real simple Google Drawings. And one of the powerful things about Google Drawings that I think a lot of people know, but a few people miss, is this open space on the side. So this is the actual drawing here in the middle. That's a transparent background. That's why you see that. And then I use the open space to put a bunch of different images and some instructions on the side here. A lot of people call these hyper drawings. I'm a big hyperdoc guy, so hyper drawings is one of those aspects of that I do. I also use Pear Deck quite a bit for the hyperdoc idea. I didn't say that before. So basically what I can do in this one here is I can drag the image here and you only really need one for those. And obviously I can clear the rest of this out once we've done it. And then I can fit that to the screen. I'll try to fit it to the screen again. I almost didn't like that one. There we go. So now I've got Grumpy Cat there. And then pretty simple, I can add different text. My kids might give me something like this. I have to change the size a little bit. You get the idea and I can double click there and kind of add that. So I can have my kids create a reflection based on those pieces here. And then ultimately when you're done with it, I can have them, if I had them just do this through Google Classroom, I can just use that right there. Or what I do a lot of times is I have them share them in Padlet then. So then you can download, I'll just show this here real quick. This is any type of an image because I want them to actually then have the image so it looks like an actual meme. You usually go PNG because that takes care of the backgrounds of the JPEG. You can even do a PDF if you want to. For those, I have them download it. And then ultimately they can load this where the rest of the class can see it and make comments on it or respond to it. So I'll do a lot of that kind of mix. I know this is Google, but I use Padlet quite a bit. That's the one big non-Google tool that I use all the time because I want that authentic audience for my students. So I'll, I'll pause here on Google Drawings here in just a minute, but that's one kind of quick way that you can use something that's already been created. And there's tons of these out there. This is not the only meme generator that exists. So, but you are more than welcome to take this one. I'll give you the link here at the end or at some point. We'll get into this. Another one that I like to do is yeah, I like to drag and drop. Um, in Pear Deck, but you saw that's a little bit limited in terms of the features and what I can put in there. So sometimes I like to have something like this, and this is just a simple practice here. We did this before we even talked about it, is if you were, had these five categories, how would you connect them to both the images and put them in a hierarchy in terms of size and those types of things? And then these just become drag and drop. So the biosphere, which is probably the whole planet, I can drag that in there and you, I can have kids add extra features in here, but this was meant to just be pretty simple. So then the next level, I'm probably working through an ecosystem here. If you don't know this stuff, bear with me. I'm just gonna talk through this here real quick. An ecosystem here. So this looks like a whole ecosystem here. And I may have to change the size a little bit. Again, this is easy to do on a touch screen. I'm doing this with my mouse right now, but a touch screen works too for those. And it's just a simple way to get kids to actually go through and instead of just typing or verbally responding, they can go through and actually manipulate this and I do a ton of these with my students during the year where we, this might be our start of a day. Hey, real quick, jump into Google Classroom, go to this, uh, the doc that I put in there and quickly without doing a lot of reading, some of them will search for it. I see them searching on the site all the time. Just see what you get on this. And you can do this on paper too, but sometimes it's just nice to have that digital copy for myself and for all my students there. So those are two really simple ways to use Google Drawings that are kind of already out there in a variety of different ways. And I'll give you some links for some other really cool features that I've seen people do with Google Drawings too for those, but I didn't want to spend a ton of time on Google Drawings today. For those, I know a lot of people do something similar to this in slides too. I think last week or the week before, they had some people really doing some neat stuff with that open space and, and I'm pointing at my screen like I'm talking to people. Uh, uh, some neat space with the open space in Google Slides too. I think Drawings is a little bit easier, at least for me, because I have a tendency when I leave the open space to accidentally click on the next slide or it wants to move me around too much, where Drawings is really a simple way to be able to do that. All right, let's uh, jump back in here real quick. And I know that was fast on Google Drawings, but I wanted to see if anybody had any quick questions on either of those two resources that I showed real quick. 
Yes, you have. There's there's two questions. I'm not. I don't know the answer for the first one. Um, can you still get the icon downloaded in the toggle box, or do you have to go do Google Docs now? I'm I'm not sure. The icon for what we were looking at. Yeah, I'm not. Um, I can ask. I can say Perfect. that. Okay. So, yeah, you know that this is this is the problem sometimes not knowing the correct word to use for all of these mm -hmm. icons i kind of brought that up before but um in in your google account you know you have the box with the little nine uh, button like the, like the waffle yes the upper yeah yes it it used to be a icon for drawings there it was a red icon um, you know, just like Google Classroom, oh, yeah. Google Meets, it's, it's icons already there. So it used to be an icon there, but I noticed that I couldn't get it there anymore. So I had to go through Google Docs. And when I went to new, I saw that the drawings was actually inside Google Docs. So and that's that's hmm. that was my question. You can't. You can't. Um, I was trying to download the drawing icon or the extension, and the extension wasn't there. It was actually. Yeah. I had to go through Google's Docs. Does anybody have an answer for that? Um, what I'm seeing is I go to New, More, and Google Drawing is under More, but it's not yeah. in that that little waffle or that that nine. Yeah, like where Steve's at. I haven't seen it there. I've had right. to go to New and then More. And, and when I went to the uh, extension store or to, um, you know, try to find it, it wasn't there. Uh, well, I, I saw it, but it just couldn't go over. It might have been uh, the way my district has our computers kind of configured. I, I see he's pulling it up. Steve's pulling it up. Mm -hmm. uh, it might yeah. be an extension, Steve. Yeah, I wouldn't think that it would be in the marketplace because Google Drawings is actually housed in Google Drive. Now, I had yeah. noticed, and again, I, I'm not in this account a ton for Google. This is my personal account, so I haven't noticed that. I, that's definitely something I'm going to want to look at here, too. So typically, when I do drawings, what I'll do is I'll open up Drive. This is my personal Drive. I'll click on right. the plug over here. And then it's, not, it's loading a little slow here, but then you'll see that more pieces there for those. And right. you can kind of see that for those. It's not open up for me right now, but when I click New, see yeah it's not letting me do it right now i think my drive's being a little ornery here so we won't mess with that for too long here for those you can also um drawings actually works inside of docs too so if you're in a google doc mm -hmm. like this one right here right you can, you can actually, pull it up from there. Yeah, you can insert a drawing in the google doc too you can either create a new one or pull one from drive now like i said whenever i go to drawings i just go to drives and i go down to that new menu and i'm sorry that i'm not showing that to you right now yep Someone mentioned, I just saw on the chat that, you know, once you install some things on your personal account, it actually works on your school district account. And I noticed that workaround too, because sometimes they, they'll block certain things for us on our school account, but then you put it on your personal account and it's still on your computer for your school account. So, hmm. uh, yeah, and I... Yeah, I, yeah, that's that's a workaround for it. I, I think I asked another question also. I'm not for sure. Can you share for collaboration? Yes, I want to know about the link. Is it? I, I know Google Docs. The kids can get on and collaborate. So since this is housed under Google Docs, would it be a possibility for the kids to like work on something at one time? I'm not for sure. Not you know mm -hmm. like Jamboard lets mm -hmm. you do that. But since this is part of Google Docs now, I just couldn't remember. Yeah, drawings is the same as Docs. You can have multiple editors in there and the kids can share. I don't do a ton of that with that because, you know, sharing a doc with a kid and having them write in specific spots is pretty clean. I think getting a lot of kids trying to insert and add stuff in Google Drawings, I haven't played with that a ton, but the, a few years ago when I did, I just found that it was a little bit of an awkward sharing place. If I want my kids to share, I'll use the the web version of Google Jamboard or also Chrome Canvas is another tool that I use sometimes for that whiteboard activity. But I, I do see some people use this as whiteboarding. It's not something that I've done a ton with drawings. 
that's a great thought for it. And it does mm -hmm. collaborate in the same way for all those for that. And you can always just go, if you want to start a new drawing, there's a couple different ways to do that. But the shortest way is just to create a bookmark. Um, and it's just drawings.google.com. So then you don't even have to go through Drive. So if I was using Google Drawings outside of, I'm all, my drive's always open. So whenever I make a new drawing, I'm right there anyway for those. But that would be another way is you could just put a, a quick bookmark to drawings.google.com and that would always open up a new drawings. And all your drawings are automatically going to be in Google Drive. So that's the trick. If you're making a bunch of them outside of Google Drive, make sure that you know where you're putting them so that you can go find them easy or that you're doing that naming convention because uh, I will not, my school Google Drive is, I'm, I'm glad, I'm really glad for the search feature because if that wasn't there, I, I would have lost more stuff than I ever would have hoped to. Right. I have a question if you don't mind. Um, yeah. I've been using um, the edit the master feature. I tried to type this in and the whole thing just disappeared. So I'm just gonna... <laughs> yeah. um, I tried to use the edit the I use the edit the master feature so that I can um, have that background so my students can't um, manipulate and then I've been doing like a um, like making little circles for them to circle their answers and putting in text boxes and whatever um, so I'd like to do that with the Google with the drawing and be able to like you can in Word you could put in a draw box so that then they would click on it and go in and then they would have to you know create a graphic organizer or you know whatever but i can't figure out how to put a draw box in google slides and i can't figure out how to put a um a background that the children can't manipulate in google docs any ideas do you see what i'm so saying yeah, I, I think I have an idea of what you're saying for those. So um, I haven't played with drawings inside because basically slides is Google Drawings. It's just a scaled back version of those. They're really the two. They're the they're kind of identical tools when you get right down to it with Google Drawings having quite a few more features. So a lot of times, if I want my students to have some type of draw, draw box, one, I'll use Pear Deck. That'd be my first choice because I can kind of use that and paste them through either through me or let them go do that independently. But if I was thinking about having them do draw stuff, and I do this sometimes, like having them create a quick diagram in something, one of my hyperdocs, I'll insert a drawing template into the Google Doc. That's where I use drawings yeah. the most. So then when they click on it, it'll open up the drawing, a, a simplified drawings window uh, for them. And then they can go through and based on whatever instructions I gave them, they can edit that. So I can make it as a completely blank one, or I can put some things in there. You can set different backgrounds in drawings, uh, but ultimately the kids are going to, and that is the one thing that is a little bit of a struggle, they're gonna be able to move stuff around. If you give them edit access, even their own copy, they're gonna, at one point or another, which is why Pear Deck is so much of a better way to do that because everything's locked in the background, except their tools to draw. And the drawing and I made a comment uh, in the in the um, feed that our district has locked us out of you know meets and hangouts and um, Zoom and everything, so we're not allowed to do that with students. So I can assign them a Pear Deck at, that they can do at their own pace whenever they want to, and then I get the um, responses back. Is that how that works? Yes. And, and I, I, I didn't go a lot into it because we did that so quickly here, but maybe uh, real quickly here at the end, once we get one through more thing, I'll show you guys where you can go and do that. I, again, the weird part about this is I, I was struggling a little bit with the Paradigm piece because I'm in my personal account and my school account kind of at the same time right now. And I don't know where, when at some point Paradigm's going to get mad at me because I'm presenting I'm presenting on my personal account. But the Paradigm I wanted to show you guys because I wanted to show you all those features was through my school account. For those and I didn't real I forgot that that idea was using Hangout Meet and my district has never opened that for teachers because they don't want it open for kids. So I fought that battle and lost it a while ago. So we only have Zoom for our but yes, that's what I'll do is I'll push it out through Google Classroom as a sample. And you'll be able to see when you look at some of the links, I'll give you some of the samples that I've done for the different people that are out there. I have a question. And I'm gonna show you one other tool that's great for drawing too here right now, since you brought that up. We'll get into that. And then we'll wrap up. I know we, we've got about 15 minutes, 19 minutes here or so. So we'll do that. So I'm going to jump in and show you guys this one other document. And again, you'll have access to all of this. But I wanted to show you one other tool here. And then I'll we'll make sure that we get the link to everything that you guys are going to have. Which, of course, I closed that one right now. So I'll have to go find that one again. I'm doing one too many things right here. Let's close I got it, Steve. Here. No worries. All right, good. 
So this is kind of the last doc that I want to talk about. And this is something that I did for a few years and then I kind of got bored with it. So there's a lot here. So don't, don't get overwhelmed. I'm really going to focus on one thing right now. Um, but I wanted to share with you what this document looks like. But also this will be one of the last ones you get. And this is what I call my Google secrets. I, Google Hidden Gems. I've, it's had a bunch of different names over the years. I don't know that I have a great name for it. Um, but I presented this a couple of times at IDEA and, and it seems to go over pretty well. So this is just a doc and I have a whole presentation that goes with this. If you were looking to do any PD, I'm more than happy to send that your way of different kind of resources for Google that I've kind of compiled over the years. And I'm always checking and updating this, but if you find a link that doesn't work, let me know for those, some books. And then there's even a little bit more of a deep doc. I just want to open this one up here real quick. This is this was the original version of it. So there's still some stuff in here that I've never moved over to the other one. And I still update this one. And this one here is a little bit less categorized and a little bit more just giving you some of those fun pieces here. And there's a lot of overlap between the two. For those. So I wanted to show you what was here first. And then I'm going to do one quick tool with you guys here. And you guys are going to kind of be able to get an idea from that. So one of my favorite tools to use as we're talking about drawing and all those types of things is Google Auto Draw. I do a lot of sketch notes with my students here and a lot of reflections where I want them to be able to draw. And this is one of the easiest tools to use for drawing. Now, it's a little quirkier. It's not going to be perfect. Google, it doesn't save in your drive. You actually have to save the file. So that's the one thing about this I, I, I don't like. But you can click on this fast how to and give you an overall view. But I'm just going to kind of show you how this works. And I'll show you how I would have to then save it and do those types of things. All right, so it kind of looks like a real nice blank whiteboard template. And you can just do normal drawing on it like that. I'm just going to get rid of that right here now. But the powerful piece about this is auto draw. It's sometimes hard to draw with a mouse or even with a touch screen digitally. So this auto draw piece, if you've never seen this, really is a great way. So I'll have my kids, like, sometimes I have to make quizzes for each other with different icons. Like, what icons would you use to represent different vocabulary words? Sometimes I'll have them create icons that they can then download and import into a presentation or something like that. And I want them to actually create it, not just do a Google search for an icon representing the environment for those. So the auto draw piece is pretty powerful here. So let's say one of the things we were talking about is a forest and we wanted some trees in our sketch notes, right? So I'm going to start to do this here. And I'm horrible at getting it to recognize me. And let's see if it actually starts to do it. There we go. So right now it looks like I've got, if you can kind of see up here on the top, I know it might be small on some of your screens. I've got a knee, a nose, and that's not what I want. And nothing here that really looks like what I'm looking for. But you'll see as I continue to work through this, I'll start to get different pictures popping up across the top here. Now, this is still a pretty sad looking tree. And I can change the color and stuff, but I'm not going to spend a ton of time doing all that. Pretty sad looking tree. But at some point, I get enough in there that the AI recognizes what I'm trying to draw. And if you look here, I've got a nice palm tree. That would be nice right now on this time of year. And now, all of a sudden, sorry, I didn't put that extra line in there. Now, all of a sudden, I've got a nice draggable image. That I can resize, change the color on, and things like that. So now instead of having a badly drawn tree, I've got a really good tree here. Let's try one other thing here. So let's say I need some animals, right? If I'm doing my whole biome here, so let's try to make myself a lion. This is probably going to be one that's almost impossible here. And I'm using my mouse right now as opposed to my touch screen because I don't have my stylus in here right now. But if you give them some legs, and another leg here, does not look at all like an animal, I'm guessing. Hopefully, you guys aren't laughing at me too hard. I can't hear you right now, so keep that muted. Here. So now I got some coats and some shirts. Yeah, let's see what else I can put in here. It, oh boy, that was horrible. Sorry about that. Give them a tail. Oh, there we go. Now I get some critters. Yeah, let's just go with that. An elephant. Let's keep it simple. You can add text in here and different things like that. So this is just a great way to do kind of some creative sketch notes for kids for those. It isn't in Google Drive, so you do have to go to autodraw.com. I'll share the link with the kids. We do this right at the beginning of the year, so my kids are pretty familiar with it for those. And then ultimately what you have to do is you can either start over or to save this, you can share it with a link and it keeps these somewhere for, seems like a long time. But what I usually like to do is have my kids download it. This isn't gonna to save to your drive. That's the one big drawback, especially if you're talking about younger kids for those to do this. If you wanna capture it, you can do that. Now, most younger kids, one thing they're really good at, I guess they should make sure that you do this here too, is the other piece of advice I can give you guys here is you can always do a screenshot. I, I've known most, Kids know how to do a screenshot pretty quick. Take a screenshot and automatically save to your Chromebook. So that's another easy way to do it without having to jump through the download hoops and those for those. But you could create a pretty high-end little graphic here without having any real drawing skills and without being really frustrated by the fact that I don't like the way my elephant looks because ultimately I can find a bunch of different elements 
that would kind of work their way through that. So that's right there. I also have that link to Google Chrome Canvas and Jamboard, which we talked about a little bit earlier. There's a game here called Quick Draw. And then a lot of the other tools that we do this. And I want to jump in for one other tool here and then give you guys some time just to make sure that I talk about this. So the one other tool that I really think has some potential is, um, and I have the link in here, but I'm just going to open it up. Google Applied Digital Skills. And I have a link to this in the original document that we'll share. Long story short, I think that this is something that can be pretty powerful. I'm going to do an if-then adventure story with my kids next week. Uh, connected some different things here, but this is basically cre pre-created video lessons. I'm not going to spend a ton of time on this if you had a chance to look at it. That's categorized by level. That can be categorized by tool and by topic. And basically what it looks like here is let's just say this learn from anywhere one. This is one of their collections here. So if I wanted to learn more about Hangouts today or have my kids do that or create a budget, say I'm teaching a business class in Google Sheets, I want to learn a little bit more about Google Sheets. But this is is a video hey, I'm Mari. throughout your life you lesson that you can scroll through i have some resources for this here too but i didn't want to spend a ton of time on it but i wanted to at least mention it if you're looking for some videos and stuff to engage your students in an activity and i anybody wants that i can share what i'm doing with my students what i've done with them for create your own adventure which is basically taking a google site and i'm pointing my screen again creating a google slide deck um, that has choices on it so kids can kind of create one of those choose your own adventure stories all right, so I'm going to stop talking, answer questions, and give you guys some time to look. And uh, if we haven't yet, can we put the link to that shortened URL in there so people have that, that document? Mm -hmm. I'm going to stop my presenting here, put my mode back on here for a little bit. Yep. So I shared your, your bit, Lee, um, and I just said that you have, you have this wealth of information, but you've organized everything so nicely for everyone that it's like you don't have to hunt and, and seek out this information it's all right there so thank you for first of all organizing all of that um there were a couple of questions um uh do any r-rated things pop up when you are drawing that's a great question so like an auto draw is there the potential that there could be some inappropriate things that pop up to your knowledge i tested that a while ago i haven't tested that again recently but no not in the, the point for those what the way auto draws working is kind of one of those experiments that they put together where they wanted to see if their AI could start recognizing stuff. When I first started auto draw, okay. it didn't recognize anything that I drew. It, you, the kids would get so mad when we first used it a couple of years ago because they'd be trying to get a ship or something and it just wouldn't be able to do that because they were missing the one thing the AI recognized or didn't recognize for those. Now, I, my kids and my high school kids would make sure they were inappropriate and we've used it a lot this year. I haven't seen them do that. I haven't tested it again recently. so. Take that with a grain of salt that maybe I need to go in there and try to draw some things that would be inappropriate. Um, <laughs> I'm not going to do that on screen with you guys because no, one, I don't one, of blame things, you. one of the things I did once was we did um, Google Family Feud, which is uh, one of their other little um, Easter eggs, and that has some very inappropriate stuff in it. I did that once <laughs> with the teachers, and it was, uh, well, I won't even go into what it was, but yep. the, the number one word was not a word that I would want to use, in, even with high school kids in my <laughs> environmental science class. Oh, man, yeah. All right, so something to explore on your own then, I guess. Um, can AutoDraw be integrated into Jamboard? I know you said you can download the, the drawings you do and screenshot them. Is there any other way that maybe they could potentially be integrated into other um, tools? Sure, I, and once you have those auto draws, like what I like to do with them is have kids do them and, and then share them in different ways. But once you have that PNG version of it or any of those other versions, you can incorporate that static piece into almost any other tool. Now, it's not live anymore. Once you download it as an image, then it's a static tool there. But let's say you wanted to then put that in Jamboard and have kids label the different icons. It's just a simple way for even me as a teacher to make a collection of icons to represent something. Yeah. I do a lot of visual quizzes. So we do that quite a bit where I'll, either I'll do it or I'll have the kids actually create the visual quiz to kind of be able to go through and do those. So ultimately, once you have that downloaded piece of it or that screenshot of it, you can put that anywhere you want to have kids write over it. You can even put that in a Google slide deck and have them answer questions on the side about it. So it's kind of a cool tool for me as a teacher to create some quick graphics, but I use it the most probably with my students to have them actually take the active ownership of that learning experience. And some of my kids love it. Some of them, they get mad because they can't quite draw what they want even with that. But it's just a quick way to do those mm -hmm. drawings in such a simple format. And then they don't have to fret about the fact that somebody's going to give them grief because their flower doesn't look like a flower. Right. 
right? You just relieve some of that anxiety that people have when it comes to sketching. Um, to your knowledge, does Jamboard have the auto correct or the auto draw feature built into Jamboard, or is it just the no, simple sketch board? No, just the stands. Oh, and I, I've been waiting for a long time um, to see if Google will roll some more of those AI features, and they've been doing a lot more AI stuff. I have a link in the Google Secrets to some of their AI stuff that they've been doing. But as of right now, that's the one thing I fought Google a little bit on for some of this stuff is they haven't brought a lot of those pieces together as much as I thought they would for those, okay. you know, at least in, from what I've seen. Okay. <laughs> yeah, Amber said, thanks, Steve. Um, this would be the answer to why my son could figure out auto draw and Jamboard. <laughs> And then Marissa said, maybe there's a little bit in the mobile app version, but like you said, not as extensive. Um, and then Kevin said, Jamboard has assisted drawing in the app, but it's just for shape. So it's not as, right. you know, extensive as the auto draw would, you know, with drawing your animals. Yeah, so you'd have to actually pull those in and you could draw them one at a time, you know, and pull them up and do those. Obviously, it's a little bit of work and probably a little bit challenging for some of our younger students. But like I said, the screenshot thing works really well, I found with younger students. Whenever I talk to our elementary teachers, almost every kid knows how to take a screenshot on a Chromebook or whatever device they have. They're, that's right. one of the things they're pretty good at. Mm -hmm. And there's so many games you could just probably come up with with that auto draw um, tool, you know, with younger students. Can you guess the image before auto draw guesses it? And just ways to just break up these meetings that we're having all the time and just inject some fun into the curriculum that we're trying to deliver as well. Yeah, and, and Are there any? Nice... Go ahead. Oh, go ahead, Steve. Sorry. That other nice tool that was out there then is they have that um, Google uh, Quick Draw, which is a game based thing. Oh, yeah. I sometimes use that at the beginning with my kids. And that's where it tells you to try to draw something. And then the AI tries to guess what you're doing. And that, the funny thing about that is the AI, when we first started playing with that a couple of years, and I'll do that sometimes as a brain break for my kids, and that's linked in there, is um, the when they first used it, it never, you, you'd go through the timer and it never recognized how, no matter how well you drew it, it couldn't recognize it. But as, as it's gotten smarter, now sometimes I barely draw in two pieces of something, and I'm like, you weren't supposed to guess it that fast. I wanted to actually finish the line. But there's all kinds of fun AI tools that are kind of connected to this. I just... I don't know what they're going to auto draw was one of their experiments. And a lot of times is if you know Google, they like to make, do those experiments and then they just kind of leave them there, you know, and sometimes they die. Sometimes they stay around. I've always been wondering what else they're going to do with that auto draw idea as because it's AI and I'm thinking we'll see something mm -hmm. at some point. I, I, I think that their education division is focused so much on Google classroom and by digital skills and some of those tools that I think they haven't really been as creative as they could be. I'm really interested to see with Jane Majera is a big part of that group now. Yeah. She does a ton of this stuff. What what we'll see, because it's nice to have a teacher there. So I'm really Absolutely. excited to what do with that. Because she's always, I, I remember Jenny when she was first starting teaching, I saw her at a conference as a second year classroom teacher and mm -hmm. how she wants to try stuff. And now, I mean, you know, she's, she was that rocket ship that took off. For sure. Keynoting ISTE to now leading Google's, you know, internationally leading Google. So I, I, I totally agree. I think she's going to be a really good spark that changes a lot with them. Um, but I do love that applied digital skills curriculum that you brought up too. I think that's definitely work, worth looking into because um, it's, again, the, the work is done for you. It's got the videos and the curriculum already built and you just go from there. Um, are there any other questions? We have about five more minutes. I'm going to put the Link to your PDH in the chat window. But if you have any other Google-related questions, now would be the, the best time. I'll pull up that document on my screen, too, so you can kind of see what's there. Um, I, I think my kids must have gotten. My kids must be doing their e-learning here because my internet's gotten a little slow, even on right here. I know. I definitely, I definitely can tell when my kids are on. I'm like, oh. yeah. um, uh, Steve, did yeah. what? What do you have your Twitter um, handle up there? I don't, but I'll, I'll take it into the stock real quick. Um, I, I have a tendency to ramble a lot in Twitter, so I generally don't recommend following me. But here, I'll go ahead and throw that in here. It's just at Wicked Ed Tech, and it's 
I couldn't get the Wicked Tap, which is what I originally wanted. I've had a ton of different Twitter handles. Yeah, so, I just couldn't. Um, I know I follow you, but I just couldn't remember. Yeah, that's me. I, I I like to share stuff. You know, like oh, got a typo here. Sorry about that. I was kind of putting this together yesterday, um, and then again this morning a little bit here, and. For me, like I create this stuff because it's part of my learning process. I really, really believe that creating to learn is one of the most strongest things, at least from for me, that I can do. I have my kids creating all the time and being those active learners as opposed to that. So basically, if you're looking at this doc, if you got to this doc, I see a bunch of you in there right now. And I'll keep this live and I'll probably update this a little bit here too. Basically, I kind of in the order that we did here, I put some of the generic Google professional development resources in here. Google does great stuff now. It used to be I used to create a ton of tutorials. Now more than half the time I'm able to find one that Google's already made. It's better mm -hmm. or as good as anything I would have made. Pear Deck resources, a couple different things I've done with that. Here's the Google drawings, which will give you some more samples. That Google secrets doc is right here too. Google Apply Digital Skills. I have some tips on using that for remote learning. And then this document here is going to be another one of those kind of overwhelming organized documents. I'm not going to open it right now, but it's Google and a little bit of everything else. As I've helped my teachers and my students with remote learning, I blog about it a lot. I create documents about different things that we're doing just to keep it organized for me. And I've always said, if you know me, the more you share, the more you learn. So if I'm going to create it for myself, why would I keep it for myself? So then I'll share it somewhere. And everything that I've created is free. There's no teacher's pay teacher piece here. If you want to recreate it, go ahead and do that. Every once in a while, some docs I've limited the ability to copy only because I'm updating them so often that I don't like those static copies. But for the most part, just recreate it. If you can use it for your students or for your staff, take it, recreate it, remake it uh, for those. The only payment I've ever asked for is if you uh, remake something and you made it better, let me know because I'd love to make my stuff better all the time. So that's my one repayment that I would like is if you make something, if you take something of mine and make it better or make it even different, share it with me because I'd love to see what you're doing. Steve, there was another question in the chat really quickly about, again, sh pushing out the Pear Deck on Google Classroom so that it's self-paced. Is it just a link that you grab and then paste it into Google Classroom? You can grab the link. It actually gives you the option when you go to that share screen to send it to Google Classroom as an assignment okay. or the different pieces there too. So that's all. Now I didn't show that all to you here because I don't have Google Classroom in my personal account. Yeah. So I couldn't show that piece too, but yeah, that was a great question. Sorry, I didn't mention that. I kind of lost that in that piece. But when you actually go to that share piece, for those, it'll give you either a link or you can actually be able to push it out directly to Google Classroom. Pear Deck integrates with Google Classroom pretty well. Mm -hmm. Google does a, a pretty nice job of taking the guesswork out. They, they set it up really nicely for us. Most of the time, yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, if you haven't looked at the chat, Steve, everybody was incredibly grateful for your time today. Um, as are we at IDEA, you know, again, last minute, came out of left field with you and, and you just hit it out of the park. So thank you so much um, for, for for putting this together today. Uh, we do have another um, coaching session this afternoon at 1.30 if you have more questions that you'd like to work through. Um, and uh, don't forget your PDH link is in the chat as well so that you can get your evidence of attending today with us. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, guys. Uh, when, when we need to go back to to get on the link, it, do we have to go all the way back? This is just something I wanted to ask because it took me a while to find out how to get on today, you know, find a link. Is that the first initial link that you gave us a couple of weeks ago? So it'll always be the same Google Meet link. Um, okay. that that you're registered for and you should get an email with that link in it and it, it'll always stay the same. And is it the same for the, the Microsoft as well? It's a different one for those, right? Yeah, the Microsoft ones are in Microsoft Teams so that you'll use that Microsoft Teams link that you get when you register. And then Apple is in WebEx and they also have a different link as well. Okay, I, I just have to go in and make sure that I'm getting, I, I got to find the links. Okay. I, I had to look around because I thought a new link would come every day. That's how they normally do it. So I just have to go back and look and see um, mm -hmm. 
get our register for the for the right. Microsoft one. Okay. Yep. All right. I hope so, I, so. We'll see you tomorrow. No, yeah, I want to be there all the time. It was just that link thing. I was like, where's this link at? Mm -hmm. so, okay, thank you guys so much. And I'll see you today. At 1 30? Yeah, 1 30. 1 30 okay. is the different time. Okay, thank you. Awesome. See you then. Okay. All right, Lindsay, I think I'm going to check out here because I actually right. got to move my principal's meeting this morning on Zoom, which is oh. all 200 of us in there to do this. So this was fun for me to kind of have to miss out. But I got to go see if there, I got any questions from my staff now. So all right. Thank you so, so much, Steve. Like Sean later. Sean is awesome. Anybody that's still in here. Um, I always learn something from Sean when I get a chance to do that. I have to just see what my responsibility because today's one of our PD days. Our students technically don't have work. So we have our virtual PD on this. I don't have a big piece in it today. So that's good. So uh, thanks again, everybody. We'll uh, hopefully see you guys somewhere soon, hopefully in person again. I'm looking mm -hmm. forward to actually getting out and seeing teachers face to face too. Yes, me as well. So thanks. Have a great day, Steve. Thanks, Steve.